Hey everyone, this is Joe. I'm an astronomer, and today I want to welcome you back to my channel. And as promised last week, I'm going to focus on how I processed this image of NGC 4535, which is most of the time referred to as Copeland's Lost Galaxy, but I like to call it the Superman Galaxy. If you go back to last week's video, you can see why. But today I want to walk you through the process of stacking images with Astro Pixel Processor and then finishing it off in um, Photoshop. But this is a great piece of software, Astro Pixel Processor. I use it to stack almost all of my astrophotography pictures. What I like about it is that it comes with a set of tools that allows me to remove a lot of light pollution. That was very important on this image because it was shot during a full moon. And you'll see that there was a lot of light pollution in this picture, but I was able to effectively remove it with Astro Pixel Processor. So let's go over and let's get started on how to process using Astro Pixel Processor and Photoshop. To get started in processing with Astro Pixel Processor, the first thing you want to do is open up the program. It's going to take a couple of seconds, and then you'll come to a screen that looks like this. The very first thing that we've got to do is we have got to set our working directory that we're going to be using. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to pick out the directory that I'm going to be using uh, that has all of my data, all of my capture data in it, and I'm going to collect or select open. That'll get me to the right um, place on my hard drive so I can get my data. The next thing I need to do is come over here to the zero and uh, where it says raw in fits, I've got to come over here and set my Debear pattern and then also click on force De uh, bear uh, CFA. If you don't do that and you're shooting with a CMOS camera, it's not going to apply the right uh, Debear pattern. And uh, so that's really important. You need to know what your camera's, uh, what, what, it, what pattern it's using, and then you need to set that. If you're using monochrome along with color filters, then I suppose you wouldn't have to do that particular step, but you, you probably have to check that out. I've never used uh, that type of setup. Next thing we're going to do is come over here to load. And you'll notice all we've got to do is really follow these numbers through, but all we really have to do is worry about 0, 1, and 6. I'll show you what I mean in a moment. Come over here to load. I'm going to click on light, and I'm going to load up my light my lights. Okay, so for, for my purposes, I'm going to come over here to this file, and I'm going to select all of my lights. For this, because I'm not going to use multi-channel mode, I'm going to just click the X, Get out of there, you'll notice I have 48 lights. Then I'm going to do the same with flats, and I keep all of my calibration frames in a folder called calibration. So I'm going to come over here and get all my flats, and you get you get the idea, right? You're just going to load in all of your calibration frames. I'm going to load in my darks. load in my darks, and I'm going to load in my biases. If I can get it to work, there you go. All right, once I have that done, now I could go through and go through each of these individual steps, and there are tons of settings that you can mess around with on it. I don't do any of that. I go straight to six. Go down here to the bottom. This is integrate. I click on integrate and it is going to start running through and stacking my data. And th this will take several minutes, but when it's done, it is going to give me an image. So we, uh, I'm going to go ahead and pause here and I will be right back. Once the program is finished stacking, what it will do is um, it will create a file with the integration here. We'll have to zoom, uh, scroll all the way down to the bottom of the file list. And um, so you'll notice I'm, I'm scrolling down here through all my files. And you'll see here integration one. This is the 
raw stack that Astro Pixel Processor puts out for us. Now, let me point out a couple of things about this picture. First of all, you will see there is some stacking aberration around here. Actually, this aberration is a little worse than I usually get, and, and that's simply because um, at one point I had to move off and refocus, and um, I didn't take enough time to get back on um, centered up exactly the way I should, and so I had some frames that you can see had some overlap, but that's okay. We'll crop that out once we go over to Photoshop. The other thing I want you to notice about this is you'll notice that the background is much darker on this side than on this side, and that's mostly because of the moon glow that was out. Again, I was imaging during a nearly full moon, so I caught about one and a half hours of data, maybe an hour of data, without the moon being visible at all, and then the moon started popping up over the horizon. And once that happens, if you've been involved in astrophotography, you know how tough that makes it. But we're going to be able to do something about that here in this next step. If you come over here to number nine on your um, menu, um, this brings you to the tools section of a Astro um, Pixel Processor. And the first thing we're going to do is remove light pollution. All right, so we're going to go ahead, and really this is very simple. Once it opens up, all we've got to do is draw a series of boxes. And we're going to put these boxes all over the image. We're going to try not to capture any stars. The other thing is, if you're shooting galaxies, obviously you don't want to put the galaxy in, in one of these boxes. If you're shooting a nebula, try not to catch any nebulosity. But basically what you want to do is you want to go all through the picture and you want to give it a good sampling of the background. And so I want to capture both the, you know, darker areas like over here, but also some of the areas where I've got all of the uh, moon glow. And so the more of these boxes I put, the better. Um, it gives it more area to sample. And I, I don't know that there's a real science in picking out where you put these boxes. The videos that I have watched and the tutorials that I've read on this just basically say, um, you know, just try not to catch any stars, nebulosities, or galaxies. And uh, once I do that, I'm going to click, uh, click over here on Calculate. It will take just a second. And you'll see this makes a big improvement in the image right off the bat. Okay, let me clear this off here. All right, let me just, uh, you'll see how, how good that looks. Let me just uh, remove yellow, remove red. And you'll see we're getting a much, much better background. All right, so then I'm going to click OK and Save. And you'll see it will give me a file name here. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. For right now, we're going to leave this as a FITS file. The next step that I do on Astro Pixel Processor is simply calibrate the, calibrate the background. And again, this is really simple. It's about drawing boxes. Again, same rules apply. Try not to get many stars. Try not to get any nebulosity. Do not get the galaxy that you're trying to shoot. And go through here and let it, it's going to do a calibration. I have not seen on this step much change in the picture, but what happens is this does help uh, for um, other steps, especially if you're going to use Astro Pixel Processor to do um, a lot of other post-processing. Over here on the right hand of the screen, there are all kinds of options, and we're not going to use those today. But if you do, you want to make sure that you've run this calibrate background uh, first. Okay, so I'm going to press OK and save. Press OK. Come down here. Pick up my picture. Okay, and so you'll see that's made the background look a lot better. 
We still have a lot of work to do on this picture. We could do, if you wanted to, you could do adjust the stretch. You can uh, bring out a little bit more sharpness and that type of stuff using the options over on this side, over on the right-hand side of your screen. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to click on Save. And when I save it, I want to do a couple of things here. First of all, I want to give it a, um, a, a file name that I'll be able to find real easy. Okay. The other thing I want to save it as a TIFF file. And the reason I need to do that is the next step is to go over to uh, Photoshop. The other thing I need to do is make sure I save this as a 16 bits integers file. Okay, that's going to set, set my image bit depth. Click on OK. And that's going to save it. And now we can go over to Photoshop. So now I have the image that came out of Astro Pixel Processor opened in Photoshop. The first thing that we want to do is crop the image. So I'm going to go over here and click on crop. I'm going to move down and I want to take out the stacking aberration. So I'm going to crop it about like that. We'll see how that looks. Okay, that looks pretty good. The next thing that we're going to that we're going to do is I want to try to get a little bit brighter more brightness here in the galaxy. This is what I really want to focus on in this image. So I'm going to come down here, I'm going to grab my curves tool. I'm going to set the black point and then I'm just going to pull that up just a tad. Now again, you'll see that there's more noise in the picture, but we'll we'll deal with that here in a little bit. Gonna flatten the curve just a little bit. Okay. And so again, you want to go kind of subtle on that um, at this stage of the game because you've already done most of the stretching in Astro Pixel Processor. So you don't want to go too far with this. I'm going to come back up here to my levels. I'm going to draw the black over just a little bit. All right. Flatten again. Now, the next thing that I want to do is I want to come over here and run a little program from Pro Digital Software called Astro Flat Pro. I don't make many changes to these settings. These are pretty much, I think, set at the default. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. That's going to flatten the image just a little bit. And I'm pretty happy with, with what, what that's doing to the image. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is go to Camera Raw. I do a lot of my post-processing in Camera Raw. It works really well for me. So now what I'm going to do is a couple of things. First of all, I'll probably draw up the contrast just a little bit. Try to get a little bit of this detail to show up in the galaxy. Okay. The other thing I'm going to do is come down and pull up the saturation level a little bit and see if I can't get. So I want some of the color in the stars. Just start seeing a little bit of blue, um, a little bit more orange and red pop up in there. Maybe pull up the vibrance slightly. I don't want to go too much on that. Okay. Again, I don't, I'm not going to get really crazy with this, just a little bit at a time. Then I'm going to come over to this um, next panel with the little triangles. I'm going to sharpen it just a tad. Trying to, again, get a little bit more of that detail down in this galaxy. Then I'm going to pull my luminance uh, uh, noise reduction up. And you notice I'm going to go pretty far on this. Now, again, this goes to taste. I tend to like to have very little noise in my images. And because this is only a couple hours of exposure, there's more noise in it. So I'm going to draw this up a little bit. I'm going to take the color, de um, color uh, noise reduction up a little bit as well. You'll see I'm getting rid of a lot of that noise in the picture. Maybe draw the detail up just a little bit. Again, this goes by taste. I don't know how far you'll want to go because you do lose detail when you're losing, when you're getting rid of noise, you're getting rid of some of the detail. 
And this is just something you're going to have to decide how far you want to take it. That's about as far as I'm going to go. Click on OK. It's going to come and bring out those changes. Next thing I'm going to do is go get my um, spot healing tool. And really, the only thing that I'm looking to do here, I want to get rid of this little red hot pixel right here. So I just draw it across. And I have a satellite trail through here. Now, you can decide whether or not you want to take out satellite trails. We live in the age of Starlink. Now, this is not a Starlink um, satellite trail for sure, because if it was, I would have lines going all the way across the picture probably. But this is just a regular old run-of-the-mill satellite. I'm going to take it out. Some people choose to leave it in. That's up to you what you do with that. I'm going to take it out. And what I can do is just run across here with my spot, heal, spot healing tool. And that will begin to take it out. Now, I did notice while I was talking, I have a satellite going this way as well. I also noticed here, I have another hot pixel. In fact, it looks like I have a couple right there. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of clean that up a little bit. And basically, that's what I'm going to do. Now, I might make a few more adjustments in this image, but you get the basic gist of what I'm going to do. The other thing, I'm going to flip this over. I'm going to flip it 180 degrees because when I put this on uh, various sites, I want to emphasize the galaxies. I'm going to put it up top. I just think it looks a little bit better. Um, again, you can decide how you would like to do that. But that's the basic processing that I'm using on this image. So here's the images that I ended up with. I actually did several revisions of this. This is the one that I really kind of like this one. It came out pretty good. You can see the spiral arms here of the galaxy pretty well. As well as over here, you can see a little bit of some of the smaller galaxies. I'm kind of highlighting them with my cursor there. Um, I don't have a large enough telescope to really get a lot of detail out of those or a lot of, of uh, you know, brightness there. But that came out pretty good. You'll notice here I did add a couple of um, star spikes just for um, a little pizzazz. If you don't like that, you don't have to add those in. I actually used a um, little add-in from Pro Digital Software called Star Spikes Pro 4. Um, I also did, here's one that I used where I cropped the picture down a little bit more. And uh, that way I, I kind of turned it. And this is one I might use on Facebook and some other things. But I kind of like this image as well. Here's one more just for good say, you know, good, uh, I'm sorry, that's... Uh, yeah, that's the one. This is this is just a slightly different revision, but that's what I'll generally do, and that kind of gives you an idea of how I process my pictures. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to click on subscribe uh, and like, and I also would very much appreciate it if you'd help me by sharing this video with your friends. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you'll come back next week, and we'll look at some more interesting astrophotography pictures.